come together to worship the Lord who is able to do anything in your life. Did you come hungry? Did you come expecting? Do you know that God knows your deepest desires? Do you know that he wants to fulfill every area of your life? Do you know that we serve a God of multiplication? Great increase is available to you if you just step up and say, God, whatever you have for me, I will take it. Good morning, Glad Tidings family. Are you out there? Good morning to our online family too. Hey, we are gathered together because we believe that God can do immeasurably more than you could ask, imagine, or think. Can you imagine that? Bigger and better than you could ever, ever think. God wants to bless you. Well, we have a couple of very important announcements. Number one, Youth Barbecue, July 28th at 6 p.m. Be sure to sign up. You know, we won't have to keep doing all this signing up, but just for a little bit longer, we still got to sign up. Go online, get your name on there, reserve your place. Also, something we haven't had in a long time is a woman's meeting. Can I get a hand clap? Woo! Come on, women, yeah! All right, ladies, we're going to have our first meeting that has been way too long July 17th at 2 p.m. You got to sign up because seats are limited. And let me just tell you something. God is already moving on my heart for that thing. We are going to have one amazing time. So you make sure that you sign up. And speaking of signing up, Wednesday night, we have limited space. Sign up. Of course, our family online will be here for you live streaming on Wednesday night. But if you want to be here in person, you got to sign up. Now, I'm going to introduce our trustee, Alex Lum. You know, he's been working really hard on your behalf. Give him a hand. Thanks, Alex. Good morning, GT and online service uh, church people. My wife, Elaine, and I have been attending this church for over 25 years. Uh, she's been attending for over 41. Our two girls grew up here. We love GT, but most of all, we love you the people. When I first stepped into this church years ago, I heard an audible voice, God speaking to me. He said, there's your wife. I went, whoa, I'm not here to pick up any girl. <laughs> but so she, Elaine was in the worship team, worshiping. So six months later, we were married. That, Pastor, you're right. We are standing on holy ground, and God will speak to you. Pastor asked me to uh, give an update on the last time I sp spoke to you about painting the exterior of the church. I believe God has brought the right company to paint our church. Right now, Elaine and I, we're getting our house painted at home. And Pastor, you're prophetic. It is pink. That's why we're going to paint it. We have neglected our house, like the church here should be, um, you see the outside of the stucco that's cracked and it needs, it needs some work. So God has brought this Christian company, can you believe it? And they have blessed us. The, the cost is 120700 plus GST. They're going to use the Chick Patterson Advanced Coding System. It's not just paint, but a multi-coat liquid vinyl applied system. They're going to fix and patch the cracks of the stucco and treat the mold. It has a 20-year warranty, so we don't have to paint, ever paint the church again. I got a coat from someone to paint just the building. It's 22,000 square feet. The guy said probably 50,000. But you got to paint every five, ten years. So think of that. Ours is 120. Um, so we better not paint the church pink or orange. <laughs> this would also prevent the building from further damage. I want to read you from First Chronicles when King David desired to build God's house. Then David, the king, addressed the congregation. My son Solomon was singled out and chosen by God to do this. But he's young and untested, and the work is huge. This is not just a place for people to meet each other. 
but a house for God to meet us. I've done my best to get everything together for the building this house, for my God, all the materials necessary, gold, silver, bronze, iron, lumber, precious and very colored stones, and building stones, vast stockpiles. This is from David's own uh, possession. Furthermore, because my heart is in this, in addition to and beyond what I've gathered, I'm turning over my personal fortune of gold and silver for making this place of worship for my God. 3,000 talents, 214 tons wow, of silver for covering the walls of the buildings and for the gold and silver work by craftsmen and artis artisans. And now, how about you? Who among you is ready and willing to join in the giving? Ready and willing, the heads of families, leaders of the tribes of Israel, commanders and captains in the army, stewards of the king's affairs, stepped forward and gave willingly. They gave 5,000 talents. That comes to 188 tons and 10,000 derricks, 185 pounds of gold. Imagine that, Pastor. They were blessed. God bless them. Right now, we, we pay gold by the ounce. They have tons. And 10,000 talents of silver, that's 30, 377 tons. And 18,000 talents of bronze, that's 679 tons. And iron, anyone who had precious jewels, put them in the treasury. We're not going to ask you to do that. <laughs> for the building of the temple of God in the custody of Jehiel the Gershonite. And the people were full of a sense of celebration. All that, were, that giving... All that giving, that's amazing, and all given willingly, freely. King David was exuberant. David blessed God in full view of the entire congregation. So let's get work together, get this done by September when everything opens up. So if, when you build God's house, God will build yours. God bless you.
take a moment and just bow your, your head in reverence just for one moment. I didn't know I could hurt this bad. I didn't know I could cry this hard. You said in the night, where are you, God? Did you leave me or did I run from you? But the Lord would say unto you this day, you're still the apple of my eye. And I've set my eyes and my heart on you. And this shall not be your resting place, a life of tears, brokenness, confusion. For this will pass, and I will pour a oil of joy on you, and that which made you cry, that what made you surrender your faith, I shall give it back to you. For there is a change taking place. And the sounds that have ruled you, the humiliation and the shame that have spoken to you, they shall be silenced because I shall speak to you. And no other sound and other voice will bring you joy and peace like mine. Hear my voice. You belong to me from this day forward. And you are not by yourself. All through this house, there's been times when you didn't know if you'd make it. You didn't know if you'd get back on track and you'd given up, but God brought you through it. And today, lift your hands with me and give thanks to God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you shouldn't have made it, but you made it. You shouldn't have got through that thing, but you got through it, hallelujah. And just give thanks all through this house. Drone, lead us in that song. Let's just give thanks, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I give you thanks, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He lamented in a Muslim day. as we give thanks there's no one that is weak 
There is no one that is poor. For your strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. And you became poor that we can become rich. And Lord, we just thank you. The mighty exchange at the cross of Calvary. You became poor. You became weak. That your resurrection life give us the strength. The resurrection power and the richness of the Godhead fully dwell in Jesus Christ. And in Christ, we are complete. We are complete in you. Lord, we just thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Today, I'm going to tell you a good news. You know, God has provided this sanctuary for us, debt-free. $42 million, debt-free. Isn't that wonderful? We thank the saints that had gone before us, that have sacrificially give and give to this house. You know the DNA of Glad Tidings is praise and worship and joy of giving. Sacrificial giving to missions, to the building of this house, and to bless those that have need. Today, as Alex has shared, we have a need here today just to paint, just to paint the outer wall and to repair. And if you live in this house, you will not let it deteriorate. Isn't it? We, are, we want to take pride in the house of God. And the budget is only 120000 To somebody, it's a pocket change. But we want to challenge every one of us. If only 120, we can give 1000 that settles it. If 240, uh, each one only 500. And this uh, uh, painter is so good, he's a Christian. He said he will not, it, the whole thing is hopefully be completed by September, but he said we can pay by February next year and without any interest. So, brothers and sisters, let us rejoice in giving. We are the joyful giver. In Mark chapter 12, verse 41, Jesus, take notice of what we give. It says that Jesus sat across the offering box and he observed what people put in the offering box. Observation. And in the uh, King James, it said he beheld. That means when you observe, you take note and you keep record. So our giving, Jesus take note and give record. And Jesus saw the rich people, gave a lot. And then there come a poor widow who gave two might, which is the least of the least. But Jesus called the disciples together and tell them, this woman has given more than all the rich people has given because she has given her all. The rich people in the uh, message, the Bible, it says, gave of what they don't miss. But this woman extravagantly gave sacrificially of all she had. Today is not how much you give. It's how much your heart, you rejoice in taking part in this wonderful, wonderful restoration of the walls of glad tidings. Of the walls of glad tidings. This is a little part that we can play. And also in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, it says that we are the steward of the well that God has given us and we have to be found faithful. 
I want to tell a story, my repentance of 45 years ago. <laughs> In 1975, we were coming to Canada, immigrating to Canada. So we sold a property in Singapore. And when you sold a property, 10% is quite a big lump sum. From young, my parents had told me 10%, 10%. Even the first fruit is 100%. I've been obeying. But when it comes to a big number to give, you know, I listened to my own logic. So instead of giving the 10% of the sale of the property, I was telling the Lord, uh, negotiating with the Lord, I need to go to Canada and we have no work. We cannot borrow money. We need to buy the house in, in cash. cash. We, we need, need to buy a car in cash. cash. And also, we don't know when we can have a job. I need some money to tie me through all those months. And you say now, McDonald's always say round off, round off. If it's 36,000, you round off to 40, right? In my that time, I round off. 39,000 supposed to give, I give 30. I round off. I keep that 9,000 to prepare for future years, you know, that was a lesson I learned. Where were the 9,000? When we came, the exchange rate, Canadian was so strong. And then, because of the economy so good, the house price gone up. So, that extra that I kept away from giving to the Lord, where did it go? Gone with the wind. So, brothers and sisters, there are many, many reasons that we can give the Lord. I need this money. But this woman, the faith, she gave all. She gave out. You think she would be destitute, this widow? I am sure her blessing will overflow. Her blessing will overflow. And Jesus will provide for her. The Lord will provide. So that's why we just sang, when we are poor, we give thanks and He will make us rich because He is the one that gives us the wealth, the power to make wealth. And we challenge you, brothers and sisters. We, I don't want to play a give challenge. We just encourage that God will stir up the spirit of giving like in uh, hey guy, the spirit of giving to build the wall of this church, to paint the wall of this church. And we, we have three ways of giving. Those who are online, watching online, you can e-transfer, which is uh, finance at gtchurch.ca. Or you can give it to 3456. Fraser Street, V5V4E4. Very easy. 345654. Isn't that God make it so easy for you? And then, or you can drive by and drop your offering. And we take any kind of money. As long as money we take. In Jesus' name, I declare. The DNA of glad tidings, the giving of joy, joy of giving, sacrificial giving, that we will be restored in this church. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. The ushers, if you'd hand out the envelopes, hallelujah. Just hand them out to the people very quickly. If you would. Oh, Shirley, are you relieved you got to confess your sin after 45 years? Is that good? She got that off her chest. I'm really happy that Shirley finally got to confess that sin. Hallelujah. What a place. Glory to God. I have incredible faith for finances. We raised five kids and I ordered all of them be rich. 
take over for your mom, for me. Give her money. How many here want rich sons? Put your hands up. You want rich sons. You have no problem with that. Tell them you cannot be poor. Be Be rich. rich. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My My 30-year-old son, son, he's a prosecuting prosecuting attorney. attorney. He He said, said, you "You know, Dad, Dad, I I, I just have one request as you pray for my wife. I said, well, what is that? That she has a very rich father. How many know that's a good prosecuting attorney? I said, okay, so any very wealthy fathers, talk to me after this service. If you have a daughter, we'll work something out, all right? You can laugh with me, everybody. I'm funny. Hallelujah. Let's stand together for one moment. Father, we just thank you for your people. We ask you to bless them. Put your hand on their comings and their goings. Put your hand on their decisions. Protect them, we pray, God. Open doors that you can only open. We declare Jehovah Jireh be on their lives and on their homes, on their planning, in their discussions. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, amen. Just give to the Lord. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. How many enjoy Shirley so much? Does everybody here enjoy her? Perpetual smile. Hallelujah. What a gift to me. If you would be so kind, I'm not trying to do calisthenics, but if you could just stand with me just for one moment in the balcony and everywhere in the church, just for one moment, stand with me. God is... um, still speaking he's still speaking I am personally conservative only child uh, intellectual German I'm half Danish also but the German dominates the Danish and I, I, I don't really have any patience for nonsense when it comes to the word of the Lord I just don't have any patience I don't want people to practice malpractice prophecies over my life. Wave your hand with me. I'm not interested in the, in the goofy and the kooks. I'm not. But I want to let you know my life has been transformed by the word of the Lord. It has. What I've done, where I've been, should have never happened came from a home that never spoke of the name of Jesus, only child, had no exposure, had no pedigree, and the word of the Lord came to my life. And God spoke to me. And I believe God speaks to his people. And today is going to be very important. I believe the number one reason that the prophetic the word of the Lord has been taken out of the house of God. It's pastors and leadership's fault. If you're on heavy medication, you walk out of, of the nut house, don't come and prophesy here. Wave at me, somebody, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you hate everybody on the planet and you're a spiritual jihad. I need somebody to help me right now. Please don't prophesy here. We have allowed nuts and fruits and flakes and rebellious people and so now what's happened, we've become skeptical uh, because that which says it was the Lord, it wasn't the Lord, it was a nut, it was a rebellious person. So we're not reeling it in, what we're doing is that we're making it real. We'll try that again, we're not reeling it in, we're not controlling everything. But if you're not, if you don't love me, you don't love these beautiful people, then don't prophesy because I love you and, and you beautiful, beautiful people, people, and I want, I want the, the real thing. thing. And, and some, some of you are going to start stirring, and we're going to get to know you. But, but if, if I don't know you, I'm not, not going to take a risk. risk. I'm not going to take a risk. There's been too many ch- children who've been maimed because they dropped their kids off at somebody's house. Hello. And they got wiped out, the kids did, because there was something wrong in that home. And spiritually, the prophetic is so wonderful. You know, if you think about the Apostle Paul, He had three prophetic words in his life. Now, this guy is the Pharisee of Pharisees. Think about it. He has a double doctorate. He has a doctorate as a lawyer, and he has a doctorate as a religious man. He's called the Pharisee of Pharisees. 
But he came to the kingdom. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It was a prophetic word. Changed his life. Then he was sent to the mission field because in Antioch there were, what, prophets. And the word of the Lord was spoken at center of the mission field. And the third one, he was prepared to die and be martyred because he had a prophetic word. How many are not prepared to die if you don't have a word from God? Hallelujah. He had a direct word from the Lord. So today, this is going to be really important because there's going to be a new flow of the prophetic. And it will change your walk, your talk, your strength, your life, and your destination. Go ahead and be seated. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. Amos, chapter 8. Amos, chapter 8. Looking at verse 11, the word of the Lord. Amos, chapter 8 and verse 11. Behold, it declares in the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The days, which is plural, are coming, says the Lord of hosts, that I will send a famine on the land. Not a famine of bread, not a famine of water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. God's not saying he's not speaking. It's that people can't hear it. Their ears can't hear the word of the Lord. And God said, I'm sending a famine. Let me tell you where the famine begins, a hard heart unforgiving heart you become a hater you become someone that you're mad at your wife you're mad at your husband you're mad at your family you're mad at your parents you're mad at your pastor you're mad at a deacon you're mad at an elder you're mad at your boss you're always angry and your heart has become hard and there's a famine on your life when you really need to hear the word of the lord you can't you can't hear it. had a little boy a friend of mine and his little son he had a speech impediment and he was slow. The kid was slow. How many of you here understand being slow? Let me see your hands right here, all right? Just you're slow. And they took him to a specialist. They were concerned, and they did something. He was born with wax behind his eardrum, and nobody knew it. He was really deaf the whole time. He learned quite a bit. And they did a surgery and got that wax from out from his ear, and the kid was smart and tells you he just couldn't hear. And often when you can't hear the word of the Lord, you live in a state of darkness and in confusion. Look what it says in the word here. It says, the word of the Lord, it declares this, there will be a famine. That God will send a famine from what? Hearing the word of the Lord. Now listen to the things that happen in this famine. It's very fascinating. When there isn't a word of the Lord, the Bible says, number one, in verse 12, look what it says, you'll just wander. You'll be lost your whole life. You'll have no directions, no assurance, no confidence. It says this, you'll just wander from here, wander to there, you'll wander from meeting, meeting, from relationship, to relationship, from church to church, from job to job, and you'll never accomplish what God has for you. So the first thing that happens when you don't hear the word of the Lord, what do you do? Say, wander. Someone say, wander. You can do better than that. Say, wander. Hallelujah. We need a black church for a moment. Someone say, wander. You just wander around. You'll never go anywhere. You'll never do anything. Look at it says, verse 12, what it says. You'll run. You'll run from here to there. But that word run is interesting because it means you'll be constantly exhausted. You'll always be exhausted. When the Lord got a hold of me, he told me that I couldn't be a playboy anymore. He forbid me to be around any women. Now, a lot of women at Bible school heard from the Lord that I was supposed to marry them, but God did not tell me that I could be a polygamist. That was a little deep. And I waited on the Lord. And there was a little girl in the church, and the Lord said, not yet, but that's your wife. It was Jody Ann. And the Lord had spoken to her, and I'm going to embellish this. Look at that man. Come on, you little church girl. Look at that man. And a spirit of lust went all over her. That was really fun. I'm going to get killed in a moment. How many understand what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. But we were called together. It was the word of the Lord. We were called to do ministry. God spoke to both of us the word of the Lord. And you'll see here that they are exhausted. They never had a word. Then it says this, 
Verse 12. They'll never find what God has for them. It literally means in the Hebrew, their life is wasted. How many of you have wasted a day of your life? How many a week? How many a month? How many a year? And how many want to put the brakes on? You don't want to waste your whole life. When the word of the Lord comes, you won't waste your life. You'll know what God wants you to do. And it will strengthen you to know God has his hand on my life. Look at verse 13, what it says. You'll faint. You'll faint. Verse 14. Then it says this, you'll never rise again. You'll never rise again. Something will happen to you and you'll never mentally, emotionally, spiritually recover. How many know many Christians that are corpse today? They've climbed into a casket, they've shut the door, and their life is over. I want to say to you today, that is not the call of God for your life. God came to me. I'm at uh, Seattle Pacific University. I'm working at Nordstrom's. I'm making thousands of dollars. Everything is good. But God had called me to the ministry. And I said to God, no, I don't want to be in the ministry. I, I want to make millions of dollars and I want to give it to your work, but I don't want to be in the ministry. And God spoke to me clearly. Here's what he said to me. Then I'm going to kill you. Lord, what do you mean in Hebrew? And then if you're really smart, here's what you do. You ask God, how? Quickly or slowly? I'm going to kill you. I said to myself, that is not God. God wouldn't tell somebody he's going to kill them. I don't believe this. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, I will kill you. Out of nowhere, I got a serious sickness. Serious. They rushed me to a specialist and said, oh my. Whoa. It's good you came in. Because you'd be dead in 30 days. I want to tell you what I did. I heard that and I walked out of the doctor. I said, yes, Lord. <clears throat> Come on, somebody. I, I'm called to preach. Yeah. And everything changed. I thought, wow, God, you don't play. Your word is real. And before that, Jody Ann, as a little girl, said, you're going to marry a pastor. And I went and told her, you know, I, I just don't want to be in the ministry. Now, she is head over heels, crazy in love with me. I need somebody to help me in this place. I need somebody. I've been married 41 years. That took all the strength I have to try to say it again, all right? She was in love with me. She had a picture of me on her phone, on her wall, in her bathroom, huh? in her makeup mirror. And she looks at me, she said, if you won't be in the ministry, I love God more than you, and I'll break up with you. Now, this doesn't happen. The V does not get broken up with. It doesn't happen. Everybody do this with me, everybody. The V does not get broke up with, okay? If, when I was young, if I heard a girl might be thinking about breaking up with me, I'd break up with her first. I'm giving you some lessons. And she said, if you won't be in the ministry, then I get this sickness. And God said to me, I have put my hand on you. This is what you're going to do. You're going to be in full-time ministry, and you have no choice. It says this, the word of the Lord, there was a what? A famine. And some of us have had a famine because we're self-willed. Some of us have a family because we're going to live our life how we want to live it. We're going to do what we want to do when we do it. And God just has to come along to the ride and bless us. How many have done that before? Lift your hand with me. Everybody else is lying. We've all done it. But it says this. When this famine comes on you, you'll wander for years. You'll never be satisfied. You'll be constantly exhausted. Your life will be wasted. You'll faint. You'll have no strength to do what you're supposed to do. And it comes a time when you will never rise again. Second Chronicles 2020. Look what it says. Second Chronicles 2020. It will get better, just not yet. Stay with me. It says, have faith in the Lord your God. And he'll sustain you. It says, when you have faith in your God, it says literally, it says this, I will keep you alive for what I called you to do. 
In other words, you'll make it another day. How many have been in a place you just want to make it another day? Let me see your hand. Just make it another day. And if you will let God and say, God, I have faith in you. I have faith in your character. I have faith in the Christ that died on the cross. God says this, I will sustain you. I will allow you to make it another day so you're closer to what God has for you. And then it says this, and have faith in his prophets and you will succeed. God will give you a word. He'll give you a word about your life, what you're supposed to do. And it doesn't matter what hits you because you have a word from the Lord. You know God's hand is on you. I'll say this today, what God's told you in the light, remember in the dark, because there will be dark times that will come over your soul. There'll come times when everybody's against you, everybody questions you, everybody thinks you're this, everybody challenges your motives, and everything in this world will come against you, but you have a word. You hold on to that word and say, let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. 18 years ago, I had a word that I would be the pastor of this church. I was pastoring a church of 2,000 that was in revival. And God said, you will pastor this church. Hallelujah. And in the dark time, I held on to the word. God said, I'll put my glory in this house. COVID, I hang on to the word. I have a prophetic word that if we redig the wells, help me somebody. A praise and worship, we redig the wells of giving to the missions. We get, redig the wells of the prophetic. We redig the wells of a Bible school. My glory will fill this house. It'll be impossible to keep people from this house. But how about COVID? During COVID, we had more money come in. This church prospered during COVID. We had a surplus time. Somebody help me in this place. It wasn't supposed to happen, but we had a word from the Lord. When you get a word from the Lord, you'll have a different swag. You'll have a different talk. You'll have a different faith. You'll have a different confidence. You'll have a different, and it doesn't matter what comes against you, what anybody says. You have the word of the Lord, and God's word is the final word over your life. Hallelujah. This is the time I'm going to help some people. You just yell right now. Go ahead, white boy. You won't hurt my feelings. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Most white boys are a little scholarly. They're a little boring. They want to do this. I want to tell you the anointing of God has come on me time after time after time. And I've seen the hand of the Lord. I'm walking into a pastor's church. He's in the dumbest, stupidest rental place I've ever seen. Low ceiling, down an alley. There couldn't be anything dumber than the place he was. And he kept fighting and laboring and fighting and laboring. And nothing was happening. I came to his church and I... You were leaving the church said, oh, I just heard the word of the Lord. He said, why? God's speaking to a couple who want to retire from the church and they're going to give you their church. He looked at me. He said, well, you're my pastor. I don't know, but I got to believe this because I'm in the dumbest building anywhere down an alley. I said, I heard the Lord. And they're more needy than you. He began to proclaim it. He began to say, Father, I thank you. that You have a miracle building. Come on, somebody. Someone say, God, I thank you that you've spoken to me. Come on, somebody, help me out. God, I thank you. This thing's going to come true. Some of you, God told your children are going to serve God. They're going to be pastors. Hallelujah. I'll take that little stinker, wrap your hand around his neck, shake him real good, and have a preach come out of him. You can pray however you want to. That's one way to pray. One of my kids said, Dad, I can't even have fun sinning. I said, you never will. You're dedicated to the Lord. You're going to be the most miserable sucker on the planet. Hallelujah. God answers our prayer. No, I'm serious. I try to go to a party. I try to do this. One of them told me once, I tried to go to a party and a girl picked a fight with me. Oh, some of you are too old. That ain't good. Come on, the young people laughed at that. How many do not want to tell your, all your bros, yeah, she beat me up at the party? Come on, somebody. This girl took me down, knocked me to the ground, stomped my head. Hallelujah. How many do you not want to have that on your record? I'd rather have a drug deal that went bad than a girl beat me up. We get a phone call from a couple. 
supernatural building was given to and paid off. So I'm going to praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Here, the prophetic is real. God's word is real. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18. Turn it with me, please. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Some of you don't know where it is. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Here we go, everybody. Oh, for some of you, marriages, maps. I can go further back if you want in the Bible. Okay, 1 Timothy. Here's the word of the Lord. Someone can smile in church. Someone pop their teeth and smile at me. Here we go. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18. This I charge and commit to you, my son Timothy, according to the what prophecies previously made concerning you, that you may fight the good fight. You may wage war. Some have rejected and they're what? Marooned or shipwrecked. Let me tell you who Timothy was. He was half Jew and half Greek. He was in Ephesus, which is modern day Turkey. There was the temple of Diana there. And every virgin had to serve there one year as a prostitute. Anything that was conceived in that temple, they took that child and they sacrificed it. And under the temple, there were hundreds and thousands of baby bones. This was the evil place. The Jews hated him, and the Greeks hated him. He was hated by everybody, but he said, look at, stirred up. Come on, say stirred up. You have a word from God about being here. And that word is stronger than the temple of Diana. That word is stronger than your race. That word is stronger than your education. That word is stronger than your upbringing. That word is stronger than your divorce. That word is stronger than your bankruptcy. That word is stronger than that sickness that came your way. That is the word of the Lord. And you can't afford to have a famine. According to the prophecies previously made concerning you. You can fight the good fight. What's the word shipwreck mean? That some have let go of the word of the Lord. And there were very few harbors that could fix a boat. And if your boat broke down and you broke down and you went to the wrong harbor, you were marooned there the rest of your life. How many don't want to be in a place you don't belong the rest of your life? Let me see your hands right now. You don't want to be stuck in a situation the rest of your life. You got to stir your faith up. You got to say, regardless of what's going on, God, arise, let your enemies be scattered. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6. Stir up. Someone say, stir up. Let's try it again. Someone say, stir up. There needs to be stirring up of glad tidings. This house is full of the word of the Lord. This is a supernatural house like no other place. Hallelujah. I'm having pastors call me and say, I want to come back to Glad Tidings. We're going to come here during our vacation. We want your team to lay hands on us. We want to hear the prophetic again. Stirred up. We haven't been in Uganda on television for 40 years, and God supernaturally opened the door in a week. We'll be back on television on Friday nights across all of Uganda. you got to stir it up. You cannot look at this. You cannot look at COVID. You can't look at what's happened. you got to look at the word of the Lord. Somebody say, I need the word of the Lord, and you need to stir it up again. We have a history of loving and supporting Israel. And what I did, I stirred it up. We're going to support Israel. We're going to give $1,000 to Israel. And some of us might even wear beanies when we come to church. Help me, somebody. They asked me to do a short thing and prophesy over them in Israel. It's not me. I'm too old and dumpy to do this. It's the prophetic in the house. How did we get $45,000 in missions? It's not me. It's the prophetic in the house. Well, how about the, it's the prophetic. How many are hearing the song of the Lord in the worship again? It's the prophetic. The prophetic was this is a house of praise and worship. I don't yell at the worship team, but I talk to them sternly. We will not sing poems from the platform. We will not sing poems from the platform. 
We will sing in the spirit. Come on, somebody. We will see people delivered. Uh, we will, hallelujah, have prophecy. We will have the song of the Lord. We will have hallelujah in the house of God. Hallelujah. But what's it say? It says in 2 Timothy 1, 6 and 7, stir up. Stop being roadkill. Boom, boom. Jody Ann and I were driving in a residential a couple years ago, and I heard boom, boom, meow. I went, uh oh. I think that's somebody's putty cat. She said, back up, back up, boom, boom. <laughs> we're going from house to house. Uh, we're not sure what color uh, the cat is. Um, it looks kind of like car tire color on, on it. Do you guys have a kitty? We're going around asking people, do you have a kitty, kitty, kitty? I'm a pastor. I do kitty funerals for free. It, and some of you just roadkill. Just life hit you. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Let's do it together. Boom, boom. Come on, everybody. Boom, boom. And a few of you, what you are... That's break slid on you. It says this, stirred up. God's going to use my life. God's going to use your life. God's going to use our life. God's going to raise business people out of this house again. Hallelujah. God is going to touch the ladies. God's going to touch the teenagers. God is going to do it, but you got to stir it up. Amen. There's no more kumbaya. There's no more folding our hands. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Uh-uh. We're going to do this. We're going to give God a shout. Hallelujah. We're going to give God a praise. Hallelujah. We're going to stir it up. We're going to believe God. Hallelujah. How many of you, sometime in your life, God has spoken to you? Let me see your hands. Sometime in your life, God has spoken to you. Well, everybody should raise their hand or you're going to hell because Jesus spoke to you for you to go to heaven. Hallelujah. He prompted you by the Spirit of God. It's true. Hallelujah. You were convicted. You, you wanted your sins forgiven. How many here God has spoken to you? Let me see your hands. Hallelujah. There's going to be still a lot of burning going on. Come on. I'm going to ask you once again. How many of you here God spoken to you? Let me see. How, how many are thankful that you're born again? Your name's written in the book of life. Hallelujah. How many are thankful that God has a supernatural editing system that your secrets, like surely sin she had to share about stealing from God, wasn't brought into the house of God? How many here are thankful that God has forgiven you and washed you with the blood of the Lamb of God? Hallelujah. God will speak to you in your marriage. God will speak to you. I really wanted to give a large sum of money to India. I really did. I mean, not pennies, not tea bags, old t shirts that we don't want to wear. I, I, this was about 15 years ago. I just felt it in my heart. And I went to my trustees and I said, I feel just a stirring, a prophetic God's going to show us what to do. I said, how much do we have in the savings? They said 35000 I said, we need to give $175,000. let us pray and fast and believe God. I have a word that God's going to bless us. The stock came up. We never bought stock in church. Churches don't do that. They just take multiple offerings and don't trust God and beg people. Hello, it's true. Trust me, I will never bow to anybody about money. Glory to God. Every need is met and this house is blessed. And it's a privilege to be a part of this house because you're part of this house, you'll be blessed. I didn't know this place was worth $42 million. I thought it was only worth 41. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so I found this stock and the Lord said, go to your team. I said, I feel like we should buy this stock. We bought the stock and it went from the 35,000 to 175,000. It was in 22 days. Somebody shout. Come on, somebody shout. God's speaking. Now, let's be balanced here. When he speaks to you, he's not making you famous, not making you rich, and he's not making you more skinny. All right? You have to cut down on the cake. Let's say that together. Cut down on the cake. All right? But he will have you fulfill what God has for you. I don't care who you are. 
where you came from, what nation you come, God has a heavenly assignment for you. It might be the greatest usher in this church. It might be in the children's. It might be cleaning the garden. But God has a supernatural assignment for you. There was a famine. It was a famine of the word of the Lord. Amos chapter 8. Not a famine of food or drink. It was a famine of the word of the Lord. What, what happens? We wander. We're, we're exhausted. exhausted. We, we never find it. We waste our lives. We, we faint. faint. And we never rise again. Old man. I'm young. He was 85 years old. We started a church on Friday nights. His name was Paul Ramont. Nobody knows him. He was never famous. He was a businessman. And the Holy Spirit told me clearly, don't be a denomination. You'll have to serve it. I was offered many things. I have a master's degree and a beautiful wife. And I could wear a blue suit with a red tie. That is a denomination. I'm working at Nordstrom's. And the Lord said, don't take it. You will serve what I've done. But you won't hear from me. And I obeyed the Lord and I went to this gymnasium. The man who, the custodian who was over, over the gymnasium, was a thermos drunk. How many know what a thermos drunk is? Anybody here? You always had alcohol in your thermos, so he could hide it, you know, and he's always drunk. And he was a custodian on the weekend, so he could be drunk on the weekend because the kids weren't there. How many know you get drunk on the weekend? And he's a drunk all the time. He'd forget to open the door of the church, and he'd be drunk, and we'd knock on the door, and he'd be back in some room, passed out. And it was just really a fun church. It was really enjoyable for me. Lord said, but I've called you again. I said, Lord, I know. This is weird. This is hard. Yes, son, I have to break you so I can use you. I said, Lord, I'm a quick learner. You're not going to break me too much. I mean, can't he get into the church and when I do he cusses at me and it's always hard to have how many know it's hard to have a greeter at your church that's swearing at people I just I just found that to be awkward maybe at glad tidings we don't but I did and here I am in the stupidest church stupid this guy comes in he's drunk and he pulls a gun out I can kill you right now preacher we'll see if you believe in God or not I said, I, I'm not the pastor. Jody Ann, he wants to talk to you. Come on, everybody. Here, right here. There's senior pastor here. We, we have no problems with ladies in ministry. And her real ministry is ballistics. And she'll be really good and she'll just come and talk to you. It just, it was mayhem. Everything was mayhem. And I remember just pointing at him in Jesus' name, you put that gun away. You need to get saved right now. And he falls to the ground and starts crying. And Paul Ramon. For a year and a half, nobody came to the church but God. And the glory began to fill the house with five people. And this old man would drive. And I pastored the stupidest church in the entire Northwest. And he'd hand me wads of money. He said, God told me I'm supposed to support you. And you're the greatest preacher I've ever heard in my life. And you're so anointed. And I just see multitudes of lives being changed going, he's got Alzheimer's. There is nobody here. The custodian's drunk. Guy pulls guns on me. Then the next week a guy came in and grabbed the offering and, and ran off with it. He just grabbed it and ran off with it. I was the only tither. And so I was still athlete, so I just chased him down. And I told everybody, I'll be back in a moment. Left the service, I ran this guy down and I grabbed him. Don't kill me, don't kill me. I'm so sorry, preacher, I'm so sorry. I said, oh, what do you need? 
opened it up. You say, well, I'm just, take what you want, but don't steal from God. You go, God, this is really a dumb church. Hi, pastor. Dumb, dumb, dumb Christian center. I need someone to wave their hand at me. This is the dumbest place. We sang a cappella, and then the glory started coming. And then people started coming. And more people came. And someone came and gave us a $9 million bill. Are you hearing this today? Hallelujah. Just because where you're where you're at doesn't mean you're out of the will of God. What's important is don't have a famine of the word of God. Stir it up. Stand to your feet with me. Hallelujah. Stir it up. I, I want to say this to you today. Stir it up. You find yourself a little bit this and a little bit that. Say it with me. Stir it up. Hallelujah. You're wandering. You feel lost. Stir it up. You're exhausted. Stir it up. That's what the word says. Hallelujah. You don't forgive somebody. You're mad at somebody. Get that off of your heart right now and stir it up. Hallelujah. That you'll never, ever reach your destination. You'll have a wasted life unless you stir it up. Hallelujah. You'll never rise again. Stir it up. Say, God's going to use my life. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. God's going to use my life. God's going to use me. God's going to use my family. Ha. God's going to use my children. Somebody stir it up in this place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let them serenade you again. Hear his love for you again. Don't look through the eyes of your failure. And don't look through the eyes of the times you had other lovers other than him. Look through his eyes. Did he not say to Gomer, I love you because I love you? Was there not a prophetic sound through the prophet of God, Hosea? She was in the arms of a, another man, and he proposed matrimony to her. And the prophet of God said, I love you with the everlasting love. I betrothed marriage to you, knowing who she was and where she was, but he still loved you. The blood of Jesus, that's what cleanses you from all of your sin. Somehow, some way, you've wandered away from God. You religiously came to church because you've been trained to do that. But today, there isn't a religious man in the pulpit. There's not a bunch of rules. There's a God that can use the brokenness of your life for His glory here today you would just lift your hand to God say use me oh God use me Lord just use my life Lord use my brokenness God use my pain use my betrayal hallelujah hallelujah just use me touch me speak to me hallelujah oh God here I am to worship hallelujah here I am to tell you that I love you God Hallelujah. What a privilege it is to hear the voice of the Lord again. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. You're not done with me yet. Hallelujah. I thank you. You're not finished with me yet. I, I thank you. You haven't thrown me away. I, I, God, I thank you. You haven't written me off. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every head bowed. Every heart open, God. You just say, God, use my life. And put your hand up right now. God, just use my life. Put your hand up right now to God. Just use my life, God. Hallelujah. Whatever way you see fit, whatever you have to do with me, God, however you want to change me, God. Father, just use my life, and I declare a new prophetic unction in this house. I, I pray that your ears would be opened. Once again, the famine would leave you. You would hear the voice and the word of the Lord again. Hallelujah. This has been a house that's become deaf to the voice of God, but I thank you. He's opening ears and opening hearts and opening life. Hallelujah. I declare that you would hear the prophet 
Hallelujah. Hosea say to Gomer, I love you. Hallelujah. I love you. Hallelujah. I love you. Hallelujah. Glory. I love you. Hallelujah. I'm going to use your life. Hallelujah. I love you. Hallelujah. In the balcony, I love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you. Hallelujah. I love you. Hallelujah. Let the love of God fill his place. Hallelujah. Let the presence of the Lord fill his house once again. Hallelujah. Shout out back on my Sunday. Glory, 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 glory. Come on, shine up on your Sunday. sing that again and let's really sing it to the Lord right from our hearts and say Lord I want to be all that you want me to be I want to stir up that gift of God within let's sing it before we go today hallelujah here I am to worship so here I am to worship here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together, Lord, we're all together, Lord, we're all together, wonderful to Here I am to worship, here I am. for the sound of your voice. He declares with prayer, in prayer and in worship, let me hear your voice, he says. So let's lift our hands, lift our hearts, and just give him a wonderful praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just let the tongues flow. It'll lift you. It'll bless you. It'll strengthen you for your journey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thunderi bi baba borie salamando. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. We give glory to God. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let the hand of the Lord on your people. Let the glory of God fill the house. Let the joy of your presence overflow. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
anointing upon our lives. Come on. Hallelujah. Just get out in the aisle. Thank you for a good day in the house of the Lord. We thank you for that anointing and that presence of God. And we pray as we go from this place, we'll live in that presence. We'll just have that fresh touch. We'll be stirring it up, stirring it up every day. And we'll just walk with God. Thank, thank you for your people. 
pray that you bless everyone and joy and peace and strength to every heart in the mighty name of Jesus and everybody shouted amen well that's hallelujah God bless you glad to see you again in the house of the Lord